So, in this video we'll be melting some cast iron. I haven't done a cast iron in a while so I'm really excited to actually pour some metal. Um, this format of the video is going to be a bit different. We're going to be talking about some of the failures, so some of the things that I did wrong. Um, it's really going to be a bit of a guide to what you should and shouldn't do when actually doing a casting. Um, this is really for me to actually learn from my mistakes, but also to ensure other people don't make the same mistakes. So stick around, it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, we get to pour some metal. So over here I'm making the sand cores. So the actual sand itself is just some kiln drying patio sand, stuff that you pick up from um, the typical hardware store. And the actual core itself just sits in the middle of the mould. It forms the centre section of my um, part that I'm producing. Um, I'm mixing up the sand with about 5% sodium silicate and then I'm using some CO2 to cure it. Really great stuff, the CO2 really does cure it very quickly, so it's a very nice way of making a model. Well, it's a nice way of making a core. Things I've done wrong here though is I've never actually left any clearance between the core and the actual mould itself. And you'll see later on when I actually put the core into the actual mould, um, it causes a bit of issues. So I think going forward, definitely having some clearance between the actual core and the mould is certainly helpful. So over here I'm going to coat the core. You don't have to coat your cores, but what you'll find is without coating them you might get some sand sticking problems, your sand will stick to your casting. Um, this particular coating is just a really high carbon content in an IPA solution. Um, I picked it up from John Winter um, and it works really well, you'll probably see it towards the end of the video that it really does help the sand stay off the casting. So I would recommend using something like this if you do have the availability to do so. So I'm using some parting powder on the bottom, so this is the actual drag section at the moment and I'm just coating it with some parting powder. So the parting powder is from Cast Cream Kilns, um, but talc probably will do absolutely fine. Um, the first mistake that you're seeing me make over here is the fact that I'm using non-facing sand. I'm basically using the sand for the bulk of the mould, which is in contact with my part. In actual reality, what I should have done is used a finer sieve, so a finer mesh grade sieve, which I have lying around, but I've forgotten in this instance, and it's to just pre-filter the actual sand, so we get a finer surface finish or a better surface finish um, on the actual casting itself. Um, alternatively, in the past, I've actually kept a box where I've got facing sand, but um, normally sieving it, it works well for me. So over here I'm preparing to put the gates into the actual mould itself. Um, I put the gates into my drag and then I connect the gates up in another gate which is sitting in my cope section and then this connects up to the sprue where the metal is introduced. A big problem however in this particular setup that I've not included is I've forgotten to include a riser so I've forgotten to include a blind riser but also a top riser and this causes some shrinkage problems which will be very apparent later on. You can see over here I'm actually using a finer grade sieve to actually get the facing sand on the actual part and then I fill in the rest of the mould with the bulk of the green sand. I tend to find that you don't need to ram that hard when you're actually doing it but when I normally ram up the actual mould I always start from the outside, compress the edges and then go around say any um, sprues or riser sections that you actually have.
So here I'm putting the core into the mould. Uh, one thing that would really help is a piece of string. So some string going through the core to actually help me guide the actual core into the mould. And as I mentioned earlier, a slightly undersized core. Only a mil in the diameter probably would be sufficient. But um, another thing that also helps is vents. So it's just some vents in the actual coat that you just saw me poke through. It just helps with some of the air escaping from the top section of the actual mould itself. So unfortunately I didn't get some videos of me lighting the furnace, but I got some videos further on. Uh, over here I'm doing my second charge, so second charge of actual metal into the melt. You're going to see me introduce some charcoal over here, and this is really to create a reducing atmosphere in the crucible, because you don't want an oxygen rich environment, it creates a lot of slag. Um, I normally put about 2% charcoal per weight, so depending on, so I'm melting about 25 kilos of iron here, and it's 2% of that is the charcoal I normally introduce. Um, a quick test that you can do just to make sure your furnace is actually running a good region is to just put some steel over your flame and just see what colour this, well, what colour it leaves the steel at. So if the steel is slightly sooty, there's a soot layer on it, then you know you've got a good or an okay redu reducing environment in your furnace. So I normally use the sparks as an indication that the metal is melting in the furnace. Um, sometimes it's the indication that the actual metal is, or the actual crucible is ready for a recharge. But by all means, it's not a definitive guide. So what you're seeing me do over here is removing some slag from the actual crucible. A lot of slag was produced here. Part of this was because I didn't put as much charcoal as like. I said about 2%, but in this melt I didn't actually put that much charcoal in there. Uh, another part of it is because I had some burner problems. I just couldn't get the environment correct in the furnace, and I believe a lot of oxygen was introduced. All in all, I think about 10 kilos of slag came out of this, which is really poor. Uh, an attribute was also the fact that I was using quite small ingot sizes, so I was using like scrap runners, sprues, etc. And um, I tend to find when I use raw pig iron, and especially big chunks of pig iron, um, I don't tend to get as much slag, but um, this particular melt was very bad for it. At one point I thought the whole crucible was almost full of slag, but luckily there was enough metal there to fill the mould. So over here I'm adding some slag congealant to the actual crucible. Um, slag congealant from Castery Kilns. It works really well. I normally add it to the mix. I give it a quick stir, close the furnace lid, run it for about 10 minutes, open it again, and then skim the actual melt. I would not leave your slag congealant in there for too long though because it does tend to attack your crucible, so it will ruin the crucible life. Slag congealant itself normally gets a viscous layer over it, so it does tend to stick to your skimmer. But what you will see in a bit is it leaves a really nice clean metal, so it really does get rid of the actual slag itself off the top of the melt. It leaves a nice clean molten pool of metal there, which looks quite good. Which the camera just about picks up, which hopefully I'll probably get better shots in better lighting conditions if I were to do this again.
No way. But DJ, and your wood's on fire? Yeah, I know. Right, am I supposed to film anymore? Oh, Ree, look at the bottom of the woods. <laughs> Are you all things going to be okay? Huh? Uh, that's your time with us, son. Yeah, could you put my timer off? Is that going to be okay? Well, I hit them. Can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. So here it is, this is the final casting, um, this is a spindle bracket for my CNC and um, it didn't really come out the way I wanted it to come out. I kind of had my suspicions when I put them all together, so um, I'll talk you through some of the defects. Um, effectively this part over here was my drag and uh, when I put the core in I almost pushed out some of the sand at the bottom of the drag. And uh, I thought I could patch it up. I thought I did an okay job at the time, but my handiwork is clearly not good enough because you can probably make out there's a large segment over here of extra material. I can grind that material away, but actually, you can probably maybe just about make out that over here, oops, over here, it's not perfectly straight. There's quite a bit of a uh, bit of material missing. Um, the same is on the other side as well. So uh, over here not perfect and it's very much on the drag so I think it's where the cores come along and it's just squeezed all of the sand out over here so I've also got a casting defect up here so you can just about make out well, there's actually a void over up here and I think what's happened is is that piece of sand which is missing from the mold has made its way up here and then it's just got trapped. It could potentially be because of air, but I've got some vents up here, so I suspect it might not be because of the air. Um, the biggest problem, however, and the reason I'm probably gonna recast it, because I can probably live with these defects. I think uh, that one there doesn't actually cause me any problems on the CAD. Um, the biggest problem is this, which is, if you can just about make out, there's a gap at the top of the casting. It's effectively where the part is trying to shrug, shrink. So um, it's been two years since I've actually made a casting or designed for a casting, and I've forgotten a couple of tricks because I remember encountering some of these problems in the past. Um, essentially what's happened is, as the actual metal has cooled, it wants to pull in some material. In the past, I've got away with just putting um, more material in the actual um, cups I pour in but in this instance that's not going to work because by that by that point the material is already solidified so it can't pull in any material from over here so what I should have done is I should have put another riser up here if I put another riser up here the problem would have gone away um, this is quite a big issue actually because if I put a ruler on here and I can't get this on camera brackets a little bit heavy to manhandle but um, that's about six millimeters that drop over here so I think I've left four millimeters machining tolerance on both sides but I'm still going to have a surface that's probably going to be well, it's workable, but I may well end up recasting this. Um, areas where in which things have gone well are the sides, this over here and this side over here or came out really well. Um, I was quite surprised about the material, so the actual uh, metal that's run in between the core and the actual rest of the mould. There actually isn't that much material there, so that's really good. But I think moving forward, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that core slightly smaller. So I'm going to probably um, probably get the mould segments, and then I'm just going to maybe put some tape or maybe a shim in this pattern to actually shrink that core size. Because I don't think I left any clearance between this 
core and the rest of the mold because I thought the sand would just be compliant but that was wrong so yeah so the black stuff that I actually put on the core um, that worked out really well this core actually was really easy to remove um, well the core itself was pretty hard I had to smash it a little bit but, but it hasn't really stuck to the side of the wall so I'm pretty impressed with that and um, the sand has stuck to the rest of the casting. I think what I've done is I've put a little bit more coal dust in my green zone to account for that, to uh, prevent it from sticking, because it's definitely worse than the last time I cast it. So I can use this, but I think changing things to the core, making sure the drag and everything has been made correctly, and then putting a riser at the top will ensure this part comes out absolutely well, absolutely fine. But um, this is usable, but I'm unsure whether I'm going to use it. So stick around, it might be version 2, and hopefully that time I can actually smash this. Get it right first, well second time. 